Madden's Madden NFL 24. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it's coming up next. Now the temperatures are cooling off, but the sun is still shining, and that makes for perfect football weather in the city of Pittsburgh at Acrisure Stadium. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here, as it'll be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here in the Steel City, I'm Brandon Gunn, joined by my partner, Charles Davis. And Charles, it doesn't matter what year it is, who the players are that are wearing the black and gold, it is never an easy assignment to come in and win here in Pittsburgh on this field. And this team always takes on the identity of this city. They're gonna be tough physically, but they're also gonna be tough mentally. Just three head coaches in 54 years, they've established their program, they know who they are. Good luck coming in and trying to take one from the Steelers. Well, meanwhile, for the Jaguars, the rebuild under Doug Peterson is right on track. And listen, nobody's going to get wildly excited about 9-8, and eight, which they were last year. I get that. But when that comes on the heels of 3-14 and 14 and 1-15, and certainly a step in the right direction. And the biggest stride they can make this year is on defense, 28th against the pass last year. And just moving into the middle of the pack, that could buy up a couple more wins and put them in a great spot come playoff time. Now the kicker, Brandon McManus, about ready to get us started. And we are underway from Pittsburgh. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The Steelers offense set for their first possession here, and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second-year man, Charles, from Pitt. Pickett didn't quite lead Pittsburgh to the promised land in his first season as the hometown kid and franchise quarterback, but he did impress once he got on the field, winning seven games helped keep the vaunted streak of non-losing seasons alive in the Steel City. Looking to throw right away, Pickett. And his first pass is incomplete. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. Here's second and 10. Now the third-year man, Najee Harris, and only a couple there up to about the 23-yard line. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going into the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. Back deep for Jacksonville, the dangerous Jamal Agnew. Now fair catch is called for and taken at the, we'll call it the 37-yard line. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time, and they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. Last year, we got the Trevor Lawrence and so many tapped to be the savior of the Jaguars. He broke 4,000 yards for the first time and threw 25 touchdown passes and guided his team to the playoffs. This young man, he's been good since the first time he picked up a ball in youth league. They expect nothing less from him again this season. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their 38. A man coming off an 1,100-yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. He picks up three on that carry. 
They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now Lawrence to throw. He'll air this one out for Kirk. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. A cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Pick it to throw on first down. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Harris running straight ahead. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Heavy set out there on third and one. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. But it wasn't a goal line situation, but how about the goal line formation on third and short? They went in and went heavy. No surprise on who was going to get the football. How about the power exhibited there? Yeah, that was just put a hat on a hat, drive forward. Nice job to pick it up. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. They run again with Harris. And he's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage, but that's about it. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot, he had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And they worked this well up field across the 45. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed. And on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Pick it now to throw off the play fake. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Two jump plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Running left, it's Warren. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. All around great play by Devin Lloyd, using his athleticism to get to the backfield and his strength to stop him for a loss. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. 
Eyes up, head up, run right through him. Pickett's throw hold in by Washington. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars 16. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. Oh, it's a well-designed play here. Three wide receivers in the formation. They're all going to run deep routes to put pressure on the safeties. And then they let their tight end cut his route off a little shorter and work toward the middle of the field. That's a difficult route to try to defend. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. Short completion, just four yards, and that's going to bring up second down. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. On second down, this is Harris. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. On third down, here's Harris. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. A much different second drive here, Charles. They go three and out the first time. This time, they've been able to sustain something downfield. And that's what often happens. You get the game started. You know, you have to get your footing underneath you. You have to get used to the flow of the game, the speed of the game. And sometimes that first drive is more of a probing drive. It appears they found something here in the second one. Give him four on the carry there, and second and goal. As large as the air attack has gotten him down here, but now is where you start to lean on that running game. That's a good pickup there on first and goal. Second and goal from the one. Harris is into the end zone for a Steeler touchdown. And how nice is it to have a guy like Najee Harris in the backfield when you get down near the goal line? He can use his 230-plus pound frame to just get you those tough yards, and he finishes things off here with a touchdown run. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And he'll put it through to make it 7-0 Steelers. And that flag accepted. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That, too. <laughs> they give it off here to the tight end. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Here's Lawrence to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Well, I'd say a couple people didn't get the read correct, Tom. Zone coverage, linebacker dropped right into the proper spot. Lucky that one wasn't picked off. He was looking directly in his eyes as he threw the football, and you're right, it was telegraphed, probably should have been picked. 
They go play action with Lawrence. To the sideline and incomplete. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. And it looks like they have to give up the football again after this one. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. Here's Austin. 43 yards on the punt. Seven-yard return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Able to slither by. Takes it to about the 37. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Here's a second down and seven from the 37. On the give, this is Harris. Shrugs the tackle. Nice. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. And this defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an outer boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Now is second and ten. Now runs straight ahead with Warren. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. Now it appears we have a Steeler here slow to get up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Here now a third down at eight. Looking to throw, pick it. He's got his target, that's complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. An excellent pick up of 34 yards. Boy, they've definitely come out of the gate smoking here in the first quarter. Whatever they've tried to run has worked. And there's another example right there. Game plan is one thing, but how about his accuracy? It's been exceptional. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Pickett will look to throw it here. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back in the 24. Angelo Blackson breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. I know there would be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Meanwhile, Pickett's throw pulled in by Robinson here. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Pickett sets up play action. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Jacksonville's pass defense holds serve. Fourth down. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes. You can read his hands. 
and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Boswell's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. field goal 10 nothing here early as the kicks away this fielded right at the goal line and able to get this out to the 25 here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here still in the first half but this offense has struggled haven't really been able to get anything going not only in the points category but in the yards category let's see if they can do better here on this drive Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Caught by Jones. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. So finally completes his first pass. Credit the defense, though. They've been showing him some different looks, keeping him off balance. Yeah, I like, it. I like the observation that you had there because when you give him different looks and give any quarterback different looks, it takes just a little bit longer to process sometimes, and you don't throw the ball with the same confidence. You're not sure that that's where you should go with the football. And that's what for the defense early in this game. And now he's got his first completion. Let's see if his confidence comes back, and he starts to get into a nice little groove. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Finds his tight end, Ingram. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Zero hesitation that time. That was get ball, throw ball. Yeah, turn into a smoke route. If you see the coverage off the receiver, doesn't matter whether you call it a run or not. Just take the ball. Get it out to him. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. On play action, Lawrence. He targets Ingram for another grab. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. They go right back to him for 20 and a first. 10-0 to score after one on EA Sports. The Jags with a football to begin the second quarter. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Lawrence going to throw again. Open man downfield is Ridley. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Call that a very strong gain of 24. But certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now Lawrence. Now, a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They're giving him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. On second down, a run with ETN. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. 
pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion and a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? And this offense on third down today, just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Lawrence will throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game. So you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. The kick by McManus is good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So, Charles, they are on the board after that kick. So, three drives, three points. Obviously, not the start that you were hoping for, but they're able to erase that zero off the scoreboard. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is a point of drive is not what offenses are striving for by any stretch. They're happy they've got three now. They hope that that unlocks their offense for bigger points down the road. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. Taking it at about the one. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Harris starts the drive on the ground. And the defense closes quickly there, and he'll get maybe a yard to the 33. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Here's Pickett on second down. That's going to be caught by Pickens. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, they obviously read man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him What do you think, mean by that? Perfect. Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. They hand this off to Harris. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. Two yards the loss, second and 12. This defense is really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. Harris going to get it again on second down. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Here's third and 10. Back to throw, pick it. Complain. Well, they came up with points in their first two possessions, but it looks like they'll come up empty here on their third drive. The defense finally starting to get locked into them a little bit. Might have to go a little bit deeper into their playbook on their next possession. Here's Presley Harvin now. Agnew now to return. 35 yards that time on the punt. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. And now out come the Jags. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done at a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. 
They'll throw this out wide and complete it to Ridley. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 34-yard line. And from the 34, here's second and four. Running out of the gun with ETN. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. It's great seeing that type of run from ETN. And look, I know we couldn't consider him for rookie of the year last year, but it really was his rookie season since an injury cost him all 2021. And he looked like a rookie of the year. Ninth in the NFL with over 1,100 yards for a surging Jaguars offense. A short throw to Ingram. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's a second and four. Now Lawrence. His throw incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open work beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Looking to throw Lawrence. And that is incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early, and now it's fourth down. It's going to be another frustrating end to a drive here. This offense, they've not been able to get anything going in this first half. And now it's going to be time to gather on the sidelines and try to figure out what's going wrong. Who has an idea? Who has a plan? Time to implement it. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. And now out come the Steelers. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 20-yard line. On play action, they'll throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. Now pick it. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? This offense so far on third down, they've hit four of seven. This is third and ten. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. And that is incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Oh, it's Presley Harvin now as he'll send this one away. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Jaguars offense now heads back onto the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Very good starting field position for the Jaguars offense as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Now a dump off here complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. 
good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Now Lawrence to throw. A short throw to Ingram. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory even if they don't get it, though. Lawrence now off the bootleg. And this is going to be incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. They're going on fourth down. Lawrence able to find the open man. That's complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Facing a fourth down, they come away with 18 yards and the first down conversion. Both sides were holding their breath there on that fourth down play, and the offense can breathe a sigh of relief. And both knew exactly where the first down markers were. You know the defense is trying to guard those sticks and try and keep people in front, but somehow, some way, those guys found a way to pick it up. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On second down, here's Lawrence. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Here's Lawrence to throw. an upcoming fourth down. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. The kick by McManus is good, and that'll bring him back within four. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. The Steeler offense set to regain possession. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. First and 10, here's Pickett. Completes this one to Pickens. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 
It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. But whenever you call and run the hitch route, a lot of times that ball's got to be in the air before the receiver even turns around. That's a result of throwing it so many times in practice. It's really a timing route. Make sure that ball's out of your hands. And oftentimes the receiver turns around and there's the ball. Nice completion there. Foyasade Aluakon made the tackle there from his safety position. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Pickett's throw hold in by Washington. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. This is Harris. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. 11 more on that one and another first down. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game was starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Pick it now on first down. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Second and 10. Looking to throw, pick it. Steps away to his left. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 in the first. They asked him to take charge and get them to a spot where they can at least attempt to kick before the half, and he does just that. Didn't trust what he saw downfield, so he took it upon himself to get them in the field goal range using his legs. That's coming through with a play they needed in a big spot. Shifts by him at the 25. They'll get four there out of the screen and it's second down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing and they shut that one down with little gain. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Pickett looking to throw on second down. Washington's got it. The result only four yards there on the play. And that's going to bring up third and two. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Pick it. And this is going to be incomplete. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. Run those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. They run for it with Harris, and he's not going to get the first. I don't even think he made it back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Tomlin takes a shot here, but to no avail. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. 
And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop them short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. First and ten, it's Lawrence. Complete to Jones. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. One play has him to the 37 here for first and ten. Lawrence. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zay Jones that time. And that'll bring up second down. Here's Lawrence. Face a third and ten after back to back incompletions. Back to throw again. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. Now Lawrence on first down. He's going to loft it deep right sideline. And that's going to be incomplete. Similar to a shooter in basketball just connected on the previous shot. They run another set for him on the next play. Now we had a guy who made the catch. They try to get the big one downfield, but came up empty. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Lawrence will throw. Sideline there, but it's incomplete. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive, as this is third and ten. Again, it's Lawrence. A throw right side here, going to be incomplete. How about the covers we just saw break out on third down? Dive defense, blanket in the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Here's Logan Cook now to punt this one away. And this punt sails over the sideline, and the spot it looks to be right at the 25-yard line. Time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. We got a fine first half out of the former Alabama man, Najee Harris. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. Jamal Agnew now to return it. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. Straight ahead, ETN. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Lawrence. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. Give him 35 yards there on the third down conversion. Uh, that's the kind of play this offense desperately needed. They've got to be saying, our defense has kept us in the ball game. We're down, but we're certainly not out. And maybe that was the spark that they've been searching for. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. ETN up the middle. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. From the 38 now, here's second down and seven. Now Lawrence. And his throw here is incomplete. Oh man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. Oh, he had a man running free, but he overshot him, and it's incomplete. My, my, if maybe that ball's two yards shorter, it's gonna give them the lead because he had a receiver running free there. That's a tough one to miss on. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And that gets him back within a single point. It's now 10 to nine. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Let's get the ball back for us. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and ten. Off the play fake, here's Pickett. Throw left side, taken in by Washington. And mark him down, way up close to the 40 at the 39. That one goes for 24 yards. As they begin
began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. Harris running straight ahead. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Now second and nine. Back to throw, pick it. not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. From the gun, here's Pickett. Here's one deep for Pickens. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. It'll be a net of 40 yards there following a 43-yard punt. Three yard return, and they will take over first and 10. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Now, this game it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 18. They'll look to ETN to start things out. And he'll power his way up near the 25. Holding offense. So they cite the right guard this time with a holding penalty. And so many different assignments you can have at that position. And sometimes you might just be a step too late and have to grab and hold on. From the gun, it's Lawrence. That one complete downfield to Kirk. And he'll be taken down, but they've got this one up to the 35-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. And one more time, here's Kirk. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll try the left side with ETN. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. The safety, Keanu Neal, there to make the tackle. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Now second and five. ETN once more. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. From midfield now, Lawrence. And that will be incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, 
With his talent, you would expect him to have more completions to him in this game. Here's Logan Cook now. They'll boot it away from about his 35. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Off play action, pick it. He's got this to Pickens. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. 23 yards on the play. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Flushed out right. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Looking to throw Lawrence. And this one into the hands of Ingram downfield. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 27 yards there, a first down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred the defense. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. Now Lawrence. 
Screenplay. Here's ETN. Finding room in midfield. And he'll get this down to the 39 yard line. A Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. Well, they certainly had their share of troubles running the football in this one, but this play is almost an extension of the running game right here. They set up the screen, let him work out in space on the perimeter, and he turns it into a big pickup. On first down, Lawrence, a short throw to Ingram. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down and four. Now Lawrence to throw. He'll get this out to the flat for ETN. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Seven yards there at a first down. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. They'll throw this out wide and complete it to Ridley. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Well, hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Second and five. Lawrence gets this quickly to Ingram. That's interference. Defense. So the PI decline, and that'll give him a fresh set of downs. And when you scout tight ends, one thing you want to know, just how strong they are. And we saw it in evidence there. He was able to fight through all the contact and still secure the football. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. Throwing into traffic there, and that's complete. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. He kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Second down and three, ball on the seven. Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no game. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. Lawrence will throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Jags are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. There's your co-NFL record holder, T.J. Watt, doing what he does best, terrorizing quarterbacks. Well, surprise, surprise. First and goal at the one. No quarterback sneak. No running play. They decide to throw it for it, but the pressure got to him quickly and put the quarterback down. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. Here's Lawrence to throw. Under pressure, and they got to him again. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. 
and it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? No, no, not at all. Way back at the 19 now. What do they have here on third and goal? They'll try to run with ETN. Call it no gain on the play, so no help there. And now fourth and goal. This defense continues to be good on third down. I mean, they haven't allowed a touchdown offensively. Are you saying, let's go for this? Let's try to get it in the end zone. I don't know about that because of what you just described. They've been so good, and they don't give up the big play that you would expect in downs one through three. Why should fourth down be yeah, any different? True. You might want to go ahead and kick the field goal and see if you can figure out something else as this game moves on. So that is second drive in to get a field goal now here in the third. Yeah, the first one got them closer, and this one gets them the lead, but I don't think they should fall in love with kicking field goals. They're going to need to put the ball in the end zone if they want to finish off this game with a win. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. They'll start the drive with Harris, and not much to speak of. Call it a one yard gain up to the 26. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. They're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for the 26. Pick it now from the gun here. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Pick it now to throw off the play fake. And he'll get it right back to Washington. And he's brought down. Ten more there and another first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. Pick it. He's going to throw it again. Over the middle complete. It's Johnson. So five yards here, five on the play, and it'll be second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. On 
On second down, this is Harris. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. And he missed it. It's no good. And they'll remain down by two. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. They certainly caught a big break with that missed field goal. Instead of trailing, they hold on to that slim lead. And now we'll see how they play this critical fourth quarter possession. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 42. They'll start on the ground, ETN, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he can even get started. T.J. Watt always a disruptor there to blow that play up. So fourth quarter, a nice run there to start this drive. Charles, what do you think the split will be here between run and pass? Well, partner, I think it'll lean towards the run, but this is also not a time where you just totally do that. You still have to possess the ball, move the sticks, and keep the clock moving as well. So they'll run their offense. But yeah, when they have a chance to run it, they'll do that a little bit more. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the shotgun, Lawrence. And he is caught, and they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's a give to ETN, and he works three, and brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Back-to-back -back nice gains, that one for 14 yards and another first. Well, you know me, partner, I never tell them to back off of being aggressive, but sometimes you see the consequences when you're overly aggressive and you don't secure tackles. Guys break through. Trying to sell out to pry that football loose, and just as you said, Cost some yardage. Yeah, you gotta go get him. Stand him up first before you go for the ball. Don't just go for it initially. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not gonna sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Now Lawrence. For the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Travis Etienne from four yards out. And the Jaguars are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. So a heck of a drive right there with the game potentially hanging in the balance. A very good drive and now conversion to make it a two score game and a solid lead. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after.
And that makes it a nine-point game. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was Travis Etienne on the touchdown reception capping the drive. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. And the Steelers set to take the field. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 21. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Looking for Pickens. He's got him on the out route. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Second down and eight. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Johnson. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Pickett on third and one. So no sack, he gets back to the line of scrimmage, but it'll still bring up a fourth down. Late in the game, he's certainly doing everything in his power to buy time for his guys to make a play, but in this case, he's surrounded, and all he has room to do is to get back to the line of scrimmage. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Pick it, fourth down, desperation time. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he is gonna have the Steelers first down. And they get it easily, a gain of five on fourth and one. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter, they felt compelled to go for it and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. On oh, the delay, here's Harris. 45 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. He had to fight for every yard on that run. Shook himself free of a tackle and kept fighting, even with the rest of the defense closing in on it. That's the kind of effort you'll take every single time. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Pick it back to throw. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And they're at the point in the ball game now where they've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball in the air and just see what happens. But this defense knows that all too well. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And Johnson lost the football. It's loose, poked out. And the Jags grab it. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. This drive didn't end well, but if they can keep stringing these together, they'll like what they're doing. That was an eight-play drive before it ended in a fumble. So the takeaway's got to be doing what we want to do and doing it well. Just got to take care of the ball at the end. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. 
And they sit in a good spot, having the ball back after the fumble recovery and up two scores in the fourth quarter. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. And the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that would overturn. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. So this offense able to convert on fourth, and now a fresh set of downs here, first and 10. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops and escape this drive. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Looking to throw, pick it. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Rayshon Jenkins picks it off, and the Jags are going to take over at their own 41. But here in the fourth quarter, defensively, you know that you're just going to blanket the field with defensive backs and say, OK, take your best shot. And that time, it's intercepted. And we've often seen teams go into the prevent early, way too early. And sometimes they get too soft in their coverages. But not in this case. They understood the situation and played it with the proper aggression. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Now ETN to start the drive. And he'll be pretty well stopped in his tracks. Give him a yard up to the 42. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Now Lawrence. And that's complete ETN out of the backfield. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. They'll run with ETN. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Well, that one hurts. That wipes away what would have been a big play. But you and I both know coaches aren't real big on silver linings. But at least that play call was a successful one. Now the focus offensively, that goes to overcoming the penalty and making all that yardage back again. The tackle by Cole Holcomb. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself. And that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. On second down, ETN once more. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. Early down stuffs have put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Now, this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. And they'll go again with ETN. And he is going to lose yardage here. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. Yeah. 
Here's Logan Cook now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So here's Pickett and the Steelers. Down by nine. A minute 53 remaining. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. Here's Pickett. Pass complete to Harris. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Short play like that in this situation this late, that's a win for the defense. No doubt. I remember something Coach Madden used to talk about all the time. Sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you. You have to take what you need. And in this case, the offense is taking what the defense is giving them, not what they need. Pickett to throw. And now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. Here's third down at five. Now pick it. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. Here we go. This is fourth down. Looking to throw here. Pick it. This is Robinson, and they work this well upfield across the 45. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You still have to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Pick it back to throw. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are gonna savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're gonna try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. Here's Pickett. Finds Pickens out right. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as it comes with a minute four left to go in the game. Let's go, man. They'll come to the line. This is third and three. Pick it. Complete. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. And Mike Tomlin going to roll up the sleeves here and say, let's go for it on fourth. Pick it to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Steelers first down as they'll wind up getting seven there on fourth and three. And that's what you've got your tough little slot receiver for, isn't it? Right there, those fourth down conversions in the middle of the field. He knows that's where he has to make his living, and that's where he has to make plays to help his team, and no one is asking him to do anything more or less than do exactly what we saw there. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens in bounds. Just over 30 seconds remain. Here's second and 10 now. They'll throw again with Pickett. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. 
what will look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. And now a tough spot here. This is third and 10. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Oh, and that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. Now the Steelers going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. Lawrence to a knee, and that will write a finish to this one. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. <laughs> So this will be a win for Jacksonville. And, you know, it wasn't a shutout. They did give up the points in the first quarter. But second, third, and fourth quarter, they held them scoreless. Brandon, if you throw a shutout for quarters two, three, and four, you win a lot of games in this league. And this felt a lot like, almost like if you say baseball, and the pitcher goes through the lineup the first time and the hitters get to see him. And then they come out after that and the bats start blazing, right? 